here in Camarillo, California, and we're at the Vitesse headquarters. I'm sitting here with CTO Martin Nuss. Martin, thanks for taking the time today. Glad to have you here. Now, in your view, which is more important, SDN or NFV, and which is going to come first? SDN has actually been used already in large data centers by the large uh, internet service providers or uh, search engines uh, over the last, let's say, two to three years and largely to create what's called large interconnect fabrics between uh, server farms in these huge data centers. Something that's actually hard to do using traditional switches and routers. Um, creating large fabrics out of many, many, many switches and routers is actually very difficult because usually the traditional protocols are shutting, trying to shut down extra links uh, that exists between all these switches and routers. So SDN is actually a good way to create a, a huge interconnect fabric between all these, uh, these server farms. Um, in a service provider network, that's actually very, very different because they're not actually, a service provider network is not really built from scratch. There's many, many different elements already there. So if you wanted to apply the same SDN principle in the service provider network, you actually would have to replace all the existing switches and routers in the network and replace them with new ones that are SDN enabled. And that's just not realistic because a lot of that equipment is still not fully amortized and will live in the network for many, many years before it's up for renewal. So the, the uh, although the data center has a really, really good business case for SDN, Service providers actually have more focused on network function virtualization as a driver for their business because they already have data centers in the service provider network. And uh, now moving from dedicated application specific service equipment, as some of the examples I gave, to centralizing and putting those applications into virtual machines in th inside a data center makes a lot of sense because then you can actually generate services much more quickly and actually get to revenue faster uh, and actually grow your top line revenue. Um, for the, and therefore the service providers have really, really pushed um, adoption of NFV ahead of their SDN uh, deployments. The reality is really that um, neither NFV or SDN can live in isolation. They're really tightly coupled because all these compute resources to create a new service, they have to all be interconnected with each other. And uh, not all the, the processing compute functions are going to be local inside a single data center. They may be actually distributed throughout the network uh, closer to the customer to actually get better um, bandwidth performance, lower latency, um, uh, and closer to the customer for content distribution, for instance. And some of the processing functions might actually reside at the customer premise itself, like firewalling, applications acceleration, and so on. And so you, now you really, really have to interconnect all these functions together in order to create a, an end-to-end -end service. And that's why NFV cannot stand by itself in isolation. You really have to look at the networking function between all these processing functions uh, in order to create the service. And then at the end of the day, you actually have to connect it to the customer too. So um, there's going to be a lot of networking required between these processing functions in order to all make it work together. So at the end of the day, there are it will be intimately tied. The processing functions can be done in, 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 in standard processors and with some acceleration uh, capabilities. But what's um, for networking, it's really important that that can be actually done at full line rate, which typically requires um, hardware performance. And so a lot of the Vitesse switching capabilities that we have are really geared towards providing connectivity between processing functions at the full line rate uh, without performance degradation 
uh, a lot of the the uh, some of the data center functions that that are being built out as part of the NFV trials are actually seeing some performance limitations already because some of the the virtual switching functions are being done in software rather than hardware so creating those programmable switching functions in hardware is very, very important to realize the full potential of NFE and SDN. Now, we hear a lot about SDN and NFE. Tell me a little bit about how Vitesse's vision is different and what is your strategy? What's different about Vitesse's SDN and NFE vision is that we view NFV and SDN tightly coupled. Uh, typically what we see out there in the industry is um, that there's either a lot of talk about network functions virtualization and um, virtualizing applications inside the data centers, inside virtual machines inside the data center, or in programmable networks, which is primarily S which is the SDN concept, but not a lot about how they actually work together. And V at Vitesse really view that interworking as highly critical in order to actually make NFE successful. Uh, because a lot of these processing functions will not just be in one big data center. It will be distributed throughout the network. It may be closer. Some processing functions may be centralized. Others may be closer to the customers and central offices and, and POPs. And, uh, some processing functions will be actually virtualized at the customer premise itself. And all of these need to be connected. So it's really, really important to look at NFV and SDN in context because the, the networking between the processing functions needs to be part of that and needs to be programmable. And so um, we view that NFV Again, as, since that is actually driving top-line growth for the service providers, is probably paying the bill. But at the end of the day, you need the programmable networking functions in between the processing functions in order to complete the picture. And what's very important is those networking functions can never be um, a bottleneck in, in the network. So, uh, networking has to f always perform at the full line rate. You can't have uh, bottlenecks going on. We already see today in some of the, the, um, the, the large data centers that some of the switching functions that are done in virtual switching inside of processors becoming bottlenecks because they're not done in hardware, they're, they're done in software. So um, having switch engines like the ones from the tests to accelerate networking functions, terminate networking functions, but make them programmable becomes very important to complete the, uh, the overall vision. And, um, and so our vision is really that the, uh, between all these processing functions, you need to have um, carrier services like the ones defined by the MEFC 2.0 and the third network initiative to connect the functions with each other and then to the customer. And having these programmable service models and APIs um, to program them um, from a centralized controller or actually from the processing functions itself becomes very critical. Great. Now, how do you envision the industry moving forward on the SDN and NFV front? The primary barrier in our view of SDN NFE adoption is actually at the orchestration layer and the operations level because you can have all that nice programmable function, abstraction, virtualization of the network re resources, network as a service, that actually can all exist and be there it still will be actually difficult to really take advantage of it for the service providers un until the traditional and relatively arcane operational models are being modernized as well. And so the overall software-based orchestration of, of uh, services, the operational model, how these services are being created and managed, all needs to be modernized at the same time. Um, that's really some of the, the biggest hurdles that we see, and I think that's something that the industry still has to work on, besides 
figuring out how to actually create that programmable infrastructure we talked about. Um, the other um, aspect that's important is we, we already have networks installed there today and we're not going to rip them out um, until years from now when they're fully amortized. So bringing in the existing network infrastructure and making that part of the overall SDN NFV vision is actually important because it will not happen if carriers have to spend money in order to make money and that is possible for NFV because it really accelerates the top line growth. For SDN it's just the infrastructure, the connectivity so there's no clear mandate from a business perspective to rip up the network and replace it with something new. So integrating the current network is very, very important. And there's many, many models that actually enable that, which are based on end-to-end -end service creation and make that programmable, but over an existing network um, in a VPN context, in an overlay context, and, and the MA of third network context is an example as well, where you create an end-to-end -end service, but it may actually be uh, deployed over an existing network infrastructure. Martin, thank you for having us here. I appreciate you taking the time. It was a pleasure talking to you.